Good afternoon, good afternoon. It's time for the Don't Give an Hour again. This program is meant to encourage us to stay in the race, to not give up, to keep the faith when all seems hopeless. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for food to eat, clothes to wear, a place to stay. Lord, you've been so good to us, Lord God. I ask now that you will speak through me to these your people, Lord God. Till the source of our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls so the seed of your word can take root in us and grow into love, grace, mercy, peace, and understanding. We pray in my name is Christ. Amen. Now, all this month, we're talking about, do we know who Jesus is? Do we know of him or do we know him? And this lesson is about Jesus, our provider. You know, when I had my strokes, my mama wasn't working. God took care of us. Not one time did the lights, gas, get cut off. My mama always had gas in the car to take to, to take places. There was always food there because God provided for us. Sure, things may look bad; they may look hopeless, but there's hope. There is hope. There's hope, y'all. And the word comes from Matthew 14. It's a familiar skip scripture. Jesus feeding the 5,000 men plus women and children. <clears throat> you see, sometimes we see things being hopeless when that's an opportunity for God to show his power and provision in our lives. Just know that. Because in John chapter 16, this is a the um this is the story of the feeding of 5,000 in John chapter 6. Jesus asked his disciples, all these people are here. We need, we need, we need to feed them. And in verse 5, they, uh, they said, Jesus, we can't buy enough food to feed all of these people. But in verse 9, there was a little boy who had brought his lunch with two fishes and five loaves of bread only for him. Hmm. And this is where we need to see what do we have. Instead of the, instead of looking at what we don't have, let's see what we do have. We do have our lives. We may not have steak, 
We may not have prime real, but we may have Benny Winnie's. We may have Roman numerals. Roman Roman numerals. We may have some hot dogs. We may have some pocket beans. We may have some bologna, some turkey meat. Instead of saying what I don't have, look at what you do have. God may be able to bless that to sustain you, to make you be able to go on a little while longer. In verse Matthew 14 and 17, from this little lad, they say, We have. Five loaves and two fishes. Hmm. And they were thinking, how can we feed 5,000 men plus women and children with five loaves of bread and two fishes? They were thinking that. The next question is, who are we giving we have to? Are we giving what we have to the government, to our jobs, to our family, to our pastors? They can't do nothing to support us in what we need. But what happens if we give to God? Say, God, I'm giving this to you because I know that you can't provide for me. They gave it to Jesus, and Jesus prayed over that a little bit. Verse Matthew 14 and 18, he said, bring them to me. He was saying, Bringing the five loaves and two fish to me. And I'm sure they were saying, what can he do with this right here? Now they don't saw Jesus with open blind eyes. They, don't, they, they, they saw him make the lame walk. The next thing, we must follow his instructions. We have to follow his instructions to get what we need in life. Because it says, Matthew 14 and 19, he directed the people to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and two fishes, looked to heaven and gave thanks and broke it. He told them to sit down on the grass. No, 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 no. Look at it. You hungry. And you see this man got five loaves of bread and two fish. Tell you sit down. Now, in my mind, I'll be saying, I'm hungry. And this man is telling me to sit down. He got five. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. That can't feed me. But they sat down. They followed his instructions. And he broke it off. And he fed them all. What if Jesus can take five loaves of bread and two fishes and feed 5,000 men plus women and children. What can he do with our little bit that we got? You know, I received 
less than $800 to live off of. But somehow, some way God provides for me to do what I need to do. God provides for me because I give it to him. Just think about it. Pay my rent, my internet bill, my travel bill, food. And I pay for these streaming services to bring the message to you. Listen, God is a provider. God is a provider for us. Y'all know the story. I had to quit my job because they cut my benefits off from the government. And where I live at, my rent was when we went sky high. And I wouldn't have been not, and I wouldn't and I would not have been able to live. God provided for me for three months with no income. You know, I'm not we're I'm not speaking from the Bible story. This is from my experiences too. God will provide for you and me if we only trust him at his word. So where said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just like the three men thrown in fire furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar said, one of them looked like the son of man, the son of God in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Jesus came down, came down to comfort them in the fire. In our fiery furnace of our lives, he will come down and comfort us too. I don't care if it's financial, emotional, physical, whatever that fire is. I know for a fact that Jesus will come and comfort us and provide for us. The word says they came out not smelling like smoke. Who got burned up? The ones who threw them in. Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fishes and fed 5,000 men plus women and children. And he has not changed one iota. The same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So the next time we're in that tight situation that seemed hopeless, where we see there's no way out. Remember, Jesus, April, Jesus, Jesus is a provider for us. He provides for us. Just know that. Believe it. Have faith to know that he's going to bring you through. No matter how it looks, no matter how it feels, he's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through through that situation that you are going through in your life. And it's not on our time, it's in his time. Because they had to wait for him to pray over the food. And then he passed it out to each and every one of them. When he got finished, they had 12 baskets left for the young man to carry home. <clears> who <throat> good God from dying. You know, 
He turned five loaves and two fishes in the 12 baskets of fish and bread. My God, my God, my God. What a good God we serve. So just know what you're going through. Just trust God and know that Jesus will provide for you. If you trust him and follow his instruction to the T. And if you don't know Jesus in the part of your sins, get to know him. He's the best person you can have. He's a provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. God, my provider. All you have to do is just say, Jesus, come into my life right now. Have to open the door and let him come in. He will change your world. He'll make everything in your life. Right. And we encourage you to join the movement called Don't Give Up. Like we always say, there's no membership fee. There's no hazing. There's no special um, ritual. We ask that you encourage someone in your life who is about to give up. We ask that you would just tell them that there's hope. Tell them to keep pushing, to keep moving. Tell them that if they keep pushing, everything going to be all right. It may get rough. It may get tough. But you got the good Lord on your side. And if you want to see more, more, more things like this, go to the YouTube page. Don't give up the movement. And if you need some more information, there's a podcast called the Don't Give a Hour. And we discuss life problems and how to deal with them on that podcast. And just know that you are important in this world. To God first, then to me. Because God didn't make no junk and God made you. Just remember, when all else fails in your life and my life, go with God. Go with God. And don't give up on your dreams, hopes, and visions. Please don't, because I need you. The world needs you. Your family needs you. Your foes need you. We need you to survive. Like I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. So remember, go with God, go with God, go with